This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. So as promised, this week I'm going to talk about value stocks and the energy sector. Energy, it's on everybody's lips. Should you buy energy stocks right now? Should you be on the sidelines waiting for maybe a pullback? Is it too late to get in the energy stocks because they've had this big run? All I ever hear about on CNBC and in you know the Wall Street Journal and all the other financial uh, media is energy, energy, energy. It was the most popular trade heading into 2021. It was the area where everybody said, this is what I'm buying for 2021. And apparently they did because it's remained red hot to start the year. Some of the energy stocks are up 20 to 30 percent just in the first two weeks of the year. And this is coming off of pretty red hot November and December. Remember, November, I think, was the best month for energy um, in years. And then December, it stayed still pretty hot. And now it's exploded again to the upside. Some of the stocks have doubled some not quite that hot but when you see stocks that have doubled in a fairly short amount of time you tend to get a little bit nervous right about jumping in especially us value investors we tend to think like no that's not a value how can i get into that now Um, but most of the energy stocks and i'm talking mainly about the oil drillers i'm not talking about the service side that would be like schlumberger and halliburton that side I'm not talking about um, the services, like the the guys that provide services to the oil drillers, none of that. I'm talking just about both big oil and the ENPs. And what that stands for is exploration and production. Everybody shortens it to just E, ampersand, P as in Paul. And so those are the guys who are just doing the drilling and they are oil and nat gas, for the most part, um, a combination of those usually. So energy is a play on the global recovery, as we know. And once we got the word that we had the Pfizer vaccine and it was working in early November and that it, they were going to start rolling it out by the end of the year, then all the energy stocks started to take off and they are still taking off on this play of the global recovery. So where should you be looking? I've mentioned again, I'm just going to cover the EMPs, but that includes, I'm going to include the big oils because everybody's just been talking about the big oils on all of these uh, shows on TV and on Twitter, on stock twits. And that's probably because those are the most recognizable to most investors. If you've never been in energy, you know the big oil stocks. And also because they had those super huge dividends, right? And we've talked about it in the past, whether or not uh, these companies would be able to continue to pay those dividends. So far they have. So um, some of the risks inherent in them, but the ones that are not big oil may provide you with the biggest upside than what those uh, big oils will do. So keep that in mind as we continue Um, with this podcast. So JP Morgan recently upgraded its rating on Exxon, one of the one of the big oils. I'm only going to cover two of the big oils today. I'm going to cover Exxon and Chevron because those are the two most popular ones. Everybody's into those. They're um, headquartered in the United States. There are numerous other big oils that you could dive into. And I actually, if you like one, you're probably going to like most of them because The market conditions are the same for all of them here with the global recovery. But for for this episode, I'm just going to cover Exxon and Chevron because those are the popular ones. So JP Morgan just upgraded its rating on Exxon to overweight or to the buy for the first time in seven years. It's not being upgraded, but the first time it's that overweight buy in seven years. So let me think back. What does that go back to? That goes back to before the big collapse in energy prices in 2015 and 2016. So it's been that long. Now they have upgraded it to overweight. Now, um, remember another thing about big oil, 
is that again they have all the components and so they refine they uh, drill well they drill for it they refine they distribute it they own their own service stations and then they have the offshoots of it which is uh, chemicals for exxon and um, several of them have big natural gas segments. Exxon in particular has a big natural gas segment. So they are like the complete package. And natural gas prices um, are also kind of interesting here in 2021 because they are off their 2020 lows. They were trading under $2 for a decent amount of last year. And then they it surged up as high as about 340 or so in October and November and come back down a bit, but it's still trading above the $2 mark. When we get cold weather, uh, the prices tend to rise a bit there. So net gas prices are somewhat attractive right here. And then WTI crude back above $50 again, and it's holding that level, which is pretty bullish. The supply demand equation is favorable here for holding it in the next couple months. The Saudis recently announced they were cutting production again on top of the OPEC cuts. So everybody right now is playing along on the capacity side and nobody is you know, going all in on drilling now that crude is back above 50. If we get closer to 60, you might see a little more excitement and some more drilling beginning. Um, but for right now, everybody's kind of keeping their, their drilling capacity in line with the demand. And hopefully that demand will be increasing as the year goes on as the global economy opens. So let's dive into these two big oil stocks to start off with. And Take a look and see, are they values here? Um, is it too late to buy them? Are they traps? What's going on? The last time we looked at energy, which I would have to go back and look, it was sometime in 2020, I know I looked at it. All the energy stocks were mostly still traps. The estimates were still being cut. It did not look good even going into 2021, but that was all before the vaccine and before um, we had some hope that maybe COVID would come under control and we would see some opening of the global economy again. And that appears to be the track that we're on, thankfully. So let's look at Exxon first, ticker XOM. Um, I used to own Exxon, as some of you know, who've listened to the show over all the years here, but I sold out of my position in 2016 and I have not gone back into any big oil stocks. So Exxon, um, three month return. As I've said, it's been hot. All of these stocks are up. It's up 39%, which is a big move for a, a company with this kind of market cap and in energy. One year though, it's still down 30% over the last year. So you can really see the beating that these stocks have taken because even with the hotness, they're still not anywhere near where they were in February 2020, right before the pandemic hit. So Exxon is now a Zach's number one rank. Can't believe I'm saying that. It's been a while. I'd have to go in and look and really dig in there and do our, our historical archives there to see when the last time Exxon was a number one, but it is now. But looking at the PE, PE is going to be high. And I caution you to when you're looking at PEs, you can't really look at it as a, a normal classic valuation play here because the commodity plays, I've said this before, will always lag on um, the earnings. The, the commodity price will start to rise, but the earnings will take time to follow and the analysts will take time to increase them as well. And so all that's gonna lag. So you're always gonna get a higher PE with a lot of these commodity plays, not even just oil, but agriculture and gold and other things. So don't always just look at the PE and, and stop there. You have to look at other things. So. Looking at the estimates on Exxon, um, it's interesting now because we are getting such a big response by the analysts here who are getting bullish in about 2021. So for Exxon, in just the last week, in addition to JP Morgan, who apparently might have raised its estimates, the there's three estimates that are being raised in, the, in just the last week 
Four have been raised in 30 days for this year, seven in 60 days. Only one has been revised lower in the last month. So three analysts getting bullish ahead of the earnings. We're getting earnings on February 2nd for Exxon. So they're starting to feel a little more bullish here. And it's back in the green. Exxon's now expected to make $1.61 for 2021. They are expected to lose 32 cents in 2020. So that's a big turnaround. Still well under what they were doing in 2019, of course, but we're all looking ahead now. So we want to just look at the positive part of it is that the story is going in the right direction. And that's when the Zacks rank uh, really does work to uncover companies where suddenly the story has changed. The, the earnings low has been hit in 2020 and now 2021 it's going to be much better now exxon it's interesting just 90 days ago the analysts were only looking for 84 cents so now they're looking for a dollar 61 for this year so that's a big increase and that's why you got the big increase in the shares it does still pay that juicy dividend we've talked about it in the past even with the shares surging in the last three months, it's still yielding 7.3%. So far, they've said they're going to pay it, and it's not in any danger of being cut here. So, yeah, you're still getting that 7.3% here with Exxon. So things are looking up with some of the big oils, I have to say. Now, the other one, Chevron, it's a Zacks rank number three. So I was kind of expecting not as much bullishness on the estimates, um, but I was wrong. <laughs> it does actually look very good and similar to what Exxon is looking at. So Chevron tick, ticker CVX, they're reporting earnings on January 29th, so a little bit before Exxon will kind of know what's going on out there. PE is similar. It's at 29, but we're not really paying that much attention. 2020, they're expected to lose three cents, but 2021, they're expected to make 321. So big jump up. Um, oh, wait, I take it back. They're not losing three cents. They're actually making three cents in 2020. So not even in the red here anymore for Chevron. They are still expected to have earnings this year. That's impressive given everything that's gone on. But 2021, 321 is what um, we're all looking for. And two estimates have been raised in the last seven days. Again, probably similar to those analysts making the changes on Exxon. They've seen similar story with Chevron, so they also made the changes here. It's not as dramatic, though, over the last 90 days. So analysts were at 303 90 days ago, and they're at 321 now. But Chevron has also always been, um, in the last couple of years, the um, more prestige, I guess. Is that how you would say it? I guess that's the term I would use. It's been the more preferred of the two big oils. It um, has a little bit uh, better uh, uh, outlook and so analysts were a little more positive on Chevron over the last you know five six year time period the shares did not get sold off as violently as Exxon has and they haven't stayed down as low and the rebound hasn't been as great as with Exxon because Exxon was kind of like the poor brother and then Chevron is the rich one so over the last year, the shares still are down 19.8%, um, but again, not down as much as, as Exxon's are still down. And over the last three months, they're up 25%. So still a nice move by Chevron over the last three months, but not quite as big a move as Exxon, but that's to be expected because Exxon was down in the dumps. Exxon was the one, um, the black sheep, no one wanted to own it. And so it's got the biggest rebound off. But if you really want to play the trade of energy and you really are in it to get the bigger rebounds into the recovery that we're all seeing, then you want to own the pure play EMPs. And I've talked about these many times in the past, and I talked about them when the crisis of the pandemic was happening and that you want to own the ones with the strongest balance sheets. And while we didn't have as many collapse during the pandemic as feared, you still want to own those with the strongest balance sheets. Uh, why not go for the strength? Because they, those are going to see big rebounds here too, and they are going to be big beneficiaries because they have the management, the cash flow, 
all of that to really be crushing it here in 2021 and 2022. So who are the ones with the best balance sheets? It's pretty much remained the same, and it's going to be the larger of the EMPs for the most part, although I do have one that's on the smaller side that you should be looking at as well. Um, and I'm not saying that so many of the others, because there's a lot in this group, there's 49 companies in this group on Zax.com. So I'm not saying that outside of these few that I'm going to talk about that the other ones, there's, there's not some good quality names in there too. But there's some that are a little more dicey on the balance sheet than others. So again, we're going to go for the strength here. And the group as a whole is all moving up at the same time. It will all sell off at the same time too when we get a pool back. But here are some names that you definitely should be looking into if you're interested in the hotter side of energy, which is going to be these pure plays, exploration and production stocks. Okay, so the first one is Diamondback Energy. Ticker FANG. Yes, this is the real FANG, F-A-N-G. It actually does have a value PE right now of 13.7. So how is it getting that when some of these others, you know, are trading at such a high valuation on the PE? And that's because the analysts are being pretty aggressive at raising those earnings and the stock still remains depressed. So for this year, Diamondback is expected to make $3.04. So that's pretty impressive in the pandemic year. They did make $6.93 in 2019. So you can see it's been cut by 56%, basically, if they make the 304. So that's been the pandemic hit. Next year, expected to make 459. So a nice jump up for 2021. One analyst has raised in the last week. Um, eight have raised in the last 60 days, probably after the last earnings report. And Diamondback has also been acquiring a couple smaller energy companies. Diamondback is in the Permian. It's a huge Permian play, and they've been adding positions with some of the smaller Permian players. They're just taking them out to, uh, you know, get get bigger dominance in the Permian. Permian is just still a huge play in the United States, and um, you have to like Diamondback's position there. So earnings expected to jump 50% by this year, which it should. Now, this is one of the hotter stocks over the last three months. It is up 100%, uh, but for the year, it's still down 31%. So you can see it's a long way off those lows here for some of these energies because they were just so beaten down. It is a Zach's number one rank. And out of the EMPs, there's only four of them that are number ones. And this is one of the few. And um, the only one I'm going to talk about today out of that group of four, actually. So um, Diamondback Energy Fang does pay a dividend. They um, are net cash positive right now. Dividend is yielding 2.6%, so not too bad. For one of these companies that is on the EMP side, they don't tend to pay out like these massive dividends. Although if you bought this a couple months ago, you were getting almost over 5% if you had bought it because they did not suspend that dividend. So that's Diamondback. And no, I don't believe it's too late to get in and that you have not missed further upside. But um, we'll see. We'll see if we get a pullback here after this red hot rally. Okay, and then switching on to another one that has a great balance sheet and that a lot of people talk about and a lot of people own. It's one of the bigger caps and it's EOG Resources, ticker EOG. Now there is Zach's number three right now. Um, none of the ranks really surprised me um, because we're just now getting the analysts in there to make the adjustments on this more bullish story that they have for 2021. So the rank will be changing, especially as you know the earnings reports come in. EOG is, an, is not expected to report until the end of February, so we got a little bit of time here. But PE is 27 on them. Again, not surprising given what's going on um, with the stock and the delay, the lag. Here in 2021, expected to make 225. They're only expected to make a dollar to a dollar two for 2020. So a gain of 120% here into 2021. They did make 498 though in 2019. So you can see they're still only gonna be about half 
the way back on earnings. But the stock market doesn't care about that. They care about that they're on the way back, that the trend is going in the right direction, and that finally earnings are on the rise. And that's what the Zach's rank captures, and that's what we want to capture too. So EOG resources, EOG shares are up 59% in the last three months, but for the year, they're still down 27.6%. They also uh, are still paying their dividend, and they are very shareholder friendly at EOG. Dividend is yielding 2.5% here. So I like EOG a lot as one of the bigger ones and um, great management and a great balance sheet. There is uh, the reason, again, that it has a Zach's rank number three, I see that they have no earnings estimates revised up for this year, for 2021. Um, although in the last 60 days, five of them are higher. One has lowered, though, in the last week. But some of that usually is just them tinkering around with, you know, a penny here, a penny there to make sure that they are where they want to be. And so, again, I'm not that concerned that nobody's raising them right now, right imminently. So EOG resources, EOG. Then we're going to switch over to Pioneer. I've talked about them many times as well. Also, one of the best balance sheets in the business. You'll see their CEO on CNBC and other news outlets talking about the industry. He he believed that there would be a lot of mergers, acquisitions, and all of that during the crisis, we haven't seen as much as expected. So maybe there's something up their sleeves at Pioneer. We'll see. There's been some deals. EOG did a deal. But, um, you know, there could still be more to come because, again, a lot of these companies are still trading well below their February 2020 value. So Pioneer up 49% in the last three months. They're still down on the on the year, down 9.6% only, though, for the year. So this kind of tells you the premium you pay for Pioneer for it being one of the best in the industry. You are paying a little bit more. PE is at 24. And again, they're almost retaking back those highs. So um, you are going to you are going to pay that premium Two analysts have raised in the last week. Five have raised in the last 60 days for 2021. We're looking at $5.62. They're only expected to make $1.59 in 2020. Wow, pretty dramatic, up 254% if that holds. They did make $8.18 in 2019. So $8.18, only expected to make $5.62, but pretty big solid rebound. It's going to take a couple years to rebound all the way back. But um, again, the shares still trading below those other highs. You do get a dividend with Pioneer, but it's never been as big as some of the others like EOG. It's yielding just 1.6% here. Um, some of these companies were also doing share buybacks and other shareholder friendly things. So um, they're all in on trying to share the wealth with everybody, just maybe not completely in the form of a dividend, but in some of these other ways. So Pioneer Natural Resources, PXD, is the ticker there. And then I'm going to finish up with one of the small guys, one of the ones that maybe you haven't ever heard of, you don't see on TV, but also has a solid balance sheet. And um, everything else is similar to the, the big guys I was just talking about. And that's Magnolia Oil and Gas, ticker MGY. I only came across this because a lot of insiders have been buying at Magnolia over the years. And even, even during the pandemic into last year, they were buying as well. In um, October, November, we had some insider buys. And uh, I guess that's paid off because over the last three months, shares are up 71%. They're still down for the year, down 29 so still a ways to go to get back to those uh, pre-pandemic highs. PE is at 17 with Magnolia right now. And they have good cash flows and uh, a lot of good things going on too that's also shareholder friendly, even though they're a much smaller company. So they have a market cap of just $2.2 billion. So that's what I mean by smaller. That's technically not a small cap, but it's, it's pretty small in this realm of oil. And so... That's also why I like them because the smaller cap stocks are going to see more of an upside and that that seems to be the case with what they've been doing over the last three months. So taking a look at those earnings estimates, they're expected to lose two cents 
this year, which again is pretty impressive given everything that was going on over the last uh, year with the pandemic. So to only lose two cents, not too bad. They made 30 cents in 2019. So, um, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time to get back to that. But the analysts think it could happen here in 2021 because analysts are already at 52 cents for 2021. And that's a gain of 2,700% for 2021. And um, nobody's been raising the last seven days, but over the last 60 days, we have had three increases. So the earnings estimates has gone from 43 cents to 52 cents over the last 90 days. So the analysts are getting more bullish on uh, Magnolia as well. It's a Zach's number two buy here. And I took a look to kind of see what was going on in their last earnings report um, because we don't have fourth quarter yet. It would be third quarter, which was a couple months ago now. But they were doing stock repurchases in the third quarter because that's how quickly everything had rebound bounced back. And I think, um, you know, they maybe had been doing it a little bit before that, but they definitely were in the third quarter. And so I expect more of that to be happening in the fourth quarter. They ended the quarter with 148 million in cash, and they had 450 million undrawn on their revolving credit facility. They have no debt maturities until 2026. This is what I mean by you know looking for companies with good solid balance sheets. They did generate 46 million in free cash flow in the quarter, and so they spent 10 million on. Uh, shareholder friendly stuff like the share buybacks and other things. So um, they're able to generate the cash flow, which is what I like in these oil companies. And that should increase and continue on as we go into this year. So where is Magnolia? They're in South Texas in the Eagle Ford and the Austin Chalk formations. And again, they're the small side, just 2.2 billion market cap. Insiders are, have been buying there religiously over the last year or even even before the pandemic, they were already bullish, but a lot of them buying in on those other pandemic lows. And then even in the fall, we'll see if they continue buying here to start the year with this big upside. But if you're buying the bull thesis on the global economy and then onto oil and net gas, then these stocks are still attractive here and they are still values. They're not the traps. Remember, the trap means that the earnings are on the decline looking forward, not on the increase. So we have the opposite scenario. We have earnings on the increase, the underlying commodity also hopefully on the increase here a little bit um, into 2021. And then we have the perfect storm of having hit the bottom on the earnings in 2020. And now things are looking brighter. We get the better Zach's rank and the story all around is looking much, much better. So keep that in mind when you're looking at any of the energy stocks. And um, nothing wrong with dollar cost averaging into some of these. Uh, there have been pullbacks. So I know that this three month rally has been pretty severe, but there was also a big rally off those March lows. And I thought that was it, but that rally petered out and um, almost retested those March lows right before the vaccine announcement. So uh, I wouldn't be too worried that it's going to be off to the races, but you never know because a lot of these, again, none of them have retaken their February 2020 highs. That's why everybody on the street is so into energy because it seems like such an obvious play, right? Because we are going to get the global economy reopening again and energy demand is going to strengthen there. Uh, the price has already Im improved. So all around the business of energy has gotten better. So it seems like a no brainer, right? Um, yes, it does. So <laughs> let me think about, uh, let me cover the tickers again because we covered some of these here. And um, we're starting with the big oils. Those are good for the dividends, but you're probably not going to get as big of a surge in the share prices as you will with just the pure play EMPs. But I know a lot of you love those dividends. I used to own Exxon. I like the dividend too, even back in the day. So Exxon is the first one, XOM. Then we had Chevron, CVX. 
then switching to the EMPs, some of which will also pay you the dividend and not too shabby either. We had Diamondback, FANG, F-A-N-G. Let me look real quick. What was that one? 2.6%. That's I'll take that. EOG Resources, EOG is at 2.5%. Pioneer is PXD. It's at 1.6%. Magnolia is the only one not paying it because it's small, but it's doing that share buyback. Magnolia MGY. So you want to be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode of the Zach's of uh, not the Zach's Market Edge, no, the Value Investor Podcast. Which one am I doing? We're on value today. So the Value Investor Podcast, because I am covering value. There's some interesting things going on in value right now as um, the new year started. And one of them was the energy and that will remain on people's minds for the next couple of months here, but there's other areas that you might wanna be poking around to find some deals. There are still some deals, even with the markets hitting new all-time highs. Yes, I'm finding them. So be sure to subscribe. We are on Apple Podcasts. We are on um, a whole bunch of other ones, Spotify. You can get us with the Zach's Market Edge. That's the other podcast I do every week. You can get us there on SoundCloud, two shows for one, but you gotta search under the Zach's Market Edge. But we're on various other channels. You can find us on Amazon. They're launching podcasts now. Get us over there. Um, We're in India. Just get us somewhere. But when you do, it's uh, always good so you don't miss a single episode. I'll be bringing you some more stocks next week. So I'll see you then. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.